Turkey sets a new agenda after a week in which the government of Recep Tayyip Erdogan rounded up 51 past and present military chiefs and accused some of them of plotting a military coup in 2003. But then, having made the point, the government, driven by the AKP, the Justice and Development Party, which has an Islamic tendency, is seeking to take the tension out of the relationship with those who see it as a threat to the country's entrenched secular traditions. A long issue has come to a head in Turkey. Uh, the army and four military officers are filled with uh, secularists, people who are committed to the dream of Kamal Ataturk, the founder of the Turkish Republic, who want to protect a secular state. Uh, not for the first time in Turkish history, they appear to have been plotting the overthrow of the Turkish government. Welcome to Agenda with George Friedman and me, Colin Chapman. Turkey's president, Abdullah Gül, called an unusual three-way meeting with Erdogan and the chief of the armed forces, General Ilker Bashbu. The meeting ended with the general saying coups in Turkey were a thing of the past. Some of those detained were freed, others were still held for more questioning, and a small number were charged. I suspect that the government will use this as a lever to try to breach some accommodation with the uh, secularists. Uh, look, the secularists understand that the government of Prime Minister Erdogan is in place, it is democratically elected, and it's not likely to be easily unseated. The Islamists in that government are aware that there's a tradition in the Turkish army of secularism that is very powerful and they have to reach an accommodation with them. Uh, this is actually an opportunity for the two sides to sit down and reach an understanding in which these officers are let go, in effect, and the government itself uh, agrees to respect certain dimensions of secularism. So clearly, apart from the coup, this is an opportunity in Turkey to for the two factions at the extremes to start addressing each other. Yesterday, a Turkish MP, Suat Kinikliyoglu, who speaks for the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Turkish Parliament and is a leading policymaker in the ruling AK party, stressed to me that his country has an agenda for change. Ankara is me mediating not only between those two, but between the United States and Iran as well. Uh, it is by far the most active diplomatic source in the region. In fact, this is one of the reasons why I think this crisis is not going to last. Most Turks are extremely proud of the role that Turkey is now playing in the region. And they're aware that it's being played by the Islamist government of Erdogan. It's not as if the military doesn't want it to play this role. So I think a range of negotiations are underway. They are under the tutelage of Erdogan and his foreign minister. I expect these to continue, and I think this is one of the reasons why opposition within the army even is mixed. And while official policy of the Erdogan government is still to seek membership of the European Union, many of the AK party's younger leaders are very skeptical. There was a time when Turkey saw membership in Europe as an affirmation of its modernization. I don't think the Turks any longer by and large look Europe at your that way. The older generation may. Some of the secularists may want membership in Europe because it would guarantee some of their secular uh, values and some of their secular institutions. But on the whole, Europe right now is simply not a very attractive place to go. And given the fact that they're not likely to let the Turks in anyway, I think there's a growing mutual understanding that Europe is not something they need to join and the Europeans don't want them. And it's not just the negativity of people like Francis Nicolas Sarkozy that's driving this opinion shift. Many younger leaders argue the strength of Turkey's economy and its rising international status will enable it to stand tall in an area of the world it once dominated with the Ottoman Empire. This is not an optical illusion. Turkey is standing taller. Turkey is a substantial power in the region. And when compared to the EU members in the region, such as Greece, uh, there is no comparison. You know, very frankly, the old relationship between Turkey and Europe is gone on both sides. And Turkey, I would suspect, is well done with it. George Friedman. Now a quick look at what's on next week, where sanctions against Iran will be very much on the agenda. 
On Sunday, the Tajiks go to the polls in a general election, watched closely because of a troubled economy and a porous border with Afghanistan. Economic problems also beset Britain. Opposition leader David Cameron is due to make a major policy speech. On Monday, the board of the International Atomic Energy Agency is due to begin a week-long meeting with Iran the prime focus. Russia's President Dmitry Medvedev begins a three-day visit to France and the trial of former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karavic for war crimes will get underway in The Hague. On Wednesday, the European Commission will present its new strategy to rekindle Europe's fragile economic recovery, while Trade Commissioner Carol de Goot will be in Delhi discussing a free trade agreement with India. President Jacob Zuma of South Africa begins a three-day visit to London. On Thursday, the presidents of the two sides in Cyprus will be meeting to try and reconcile the long-standing differences on the divided Mediterranean island. Public workers in Portugal are due to hold a national strike. And on Friday, the governors of the European Central Bank will meet to decide whether to change interest rates in the wake of last week's move by the Fed.